About a year ago, Jay's Two Cents reviewed a CPU air cooler that costs about $30 USD. And I've been curious since that video came out to check it out. So the question is, is it worth your hard earned money to pick this thing up? Or should you stand clear of it and go with something else? Let's find out. Hey everybody, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. If you've never been here before, I like to frequently do videos on hardware reviews, full PC builds, and sometimes I'll throw in a how-to video once in a while. I wanna take a look at this CPU cooler today. This is not by a really well-known company. Their name is Vetru, Vetro, I don't know. However you say it, I think it's Vetru, we'll go with that. Vetru is a PC component company that has everything from motherboards to power supplies to cases, and of course, coolers like this V5 I have here. The Vetri V5 is a CPU tower cooler, which is 128 by 75 by 148 millimeters tall. It has five copper heat pipes, hence the V5 naming, with aluminum cold plate and a flat black coating. It's also got a 120 millimeter ARGB hydraulic bearing fan. What I wanna do is just open this thing up and take a look at the components that come inside the box as well as the cooler itself. And then I'll do some thermal benchmark testing and maybe some noise benchmarks as well and give you an idea of what you can expect out of this little cooler. So to open everything up, it's actually packaged really nicely. It's got some foam to it. It's got the cooler separated so it doesn't get messed up from anything. It's got a full instruction manual, very simplistic though, but it has your parts list and it has the breakdown of how to install for AMD and Intel. The cool thing is this will actually work for Intel LGA 1700 socket and I'll show you in a second why that is. Everything's really nicely packaged in the bag. You've got Intel brackets in the little bag that says Intel. You've got AMD brackets in the AMD bag, nicely separated. It's got your retainer clips for the fan itself, which I'm not really a huge fan of. Ha, <laughs> fan, get it? I'm not a huge fan of the clips though, and I wish these companies would come out with some kind of other option to be able to mount it to the cooler. You've got your Intel backplate here with uh, slider clips to be able to reach 775, LGA 1150s, 1366, and actually it works with the 1700 as well because you can slide these as much as you want to make them line up to where the Intel holes are coming out at. And then they have their own little thermal interface material. It's just a tube of thermal paste probably only good for about one to two applications. It's not a whole lot. And then you have a bag, a small bag of screws here, which are for mounting your clips, your retaining clips to the cooler itself. As I said, the cooler has a flat black coating to it. I'm not really sure what it's coated with. It's almost like an anodized material. If you flip it over and look at the bottom, as I said, it's got five contact heat pipes. These are copper. This is a aluminum heat plate, but the pipes in the middle make the contact directly to your CPU. Let's take a look at the fan here real quick. It's got rubber feet on all corners and both sides of the fan. It's an ARGB fan, as I said. It spins very smoothly. It's not getting hung up or anything. It, uh, it's actually just a really nice aesthetic. It has a four pin PWM connector for full fan control. Now, the thing that's a little complicated to me is this is a five volt addressable RGB connector. It's nice that they made the little daisy chain connection because if you want to connect other fans to this and kind of sync them through software, you can. However, there is no RGB connector or anything like that. If you don't have the connection on your motherboard, the fan just won't turn on, the lighting on it. It's packaged really nice. There's so many things in the box, yet it's not overwhelming and you don't have more than what you need. So let's throw this together real quick and see how easy this thing is to assemble. All you need to put this thing together is a Phillips number two screwdriver and uh, that's it. Just grab your screws and grab your mounting brackets that you'll need. For mine, it's an AMD test system. Yours might be Intel, which you'll need the backplate bracket that comes with it. AMD is gonna reuse their original backplates. You can see where the actual bracket uh, curves at. You want the brackets kind of angling inwards so that you're getting the proper distribution pressure. But all you're gonna do is run these two screws in from underneath and that's gonna hold the brackets down. The screws themselves that go into the back plate on your AMD uh, motherboard are just retention screws that have a spring-loaded clip to them. All you do is put the same thing on the other side and you've got your brackets all set up. This is as far as you need to get to be able to install it onto the motherboard. But let's throw it on the board and see how it works. Uh, 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 uh,
I pitted the Vetru V5 against the Corsair A500, the Wraith Prism Cooler from AMD, and the Wraith Stealth Cooler. For the performance testing, I'm using a Ryzen 7 5700G. This is an 8-core, 16-thread chip, and it's a 65-watt TDP, so it's not really overly powerful, but I think the 8-cores and 16-threads is a good limit to uh, this CPU cooler. I ran the test using Cinebench R23, and I did the 10-minute test throttling. I'm also using an Innovation Cooling Graphite Thermal Pad. I like to use these things in the studio here for all of my testing benchmarks. Um, anytime I do a build, it's just easier than using thermal paste. The cleanup is non-existent and it keeps it consistent for pretty much everything I do. If you wanna check out these products, I'll leave a link below in the description. You can go over to Amazon and pick them up for yourself. They're relatively cheap and uh, pretty useful in, in my line of work. If you take a look at the chart here, the Vetru V5 got 71 Celsius in the Cinebench score. The Corsair A500 got 64 Celsius. Well, the Wraith Prism was the exact same scoring as the Vetru V5 at 71C. And the Wraith Stealth did not do a good job at 93 Celsius. I don't recommend you use that. So if you've picked up a 5700G and you're looking for an alternative to the Stealth that comes with it, this is a great alternative. At $30, it gives you great aesthetics and awesome performance. Now these speeds, none of them test throttled. Even the Wraith Stealth did not limit the CPU's performance. They all ran anywhere between 4.2 and 4.3 gigahertz, which is what they're supposed to run on all cores out of the box. I was able to download this app on my cell phone. It was actually pretty useful. It's called Decibel X. And all it does is just records audio through your microphone and your cell phone. And it gives you the decibel reading of that level. I don't think it's really scientific or anything. I mean, it might be but I just wanted to see what kind of numbers they would show up as. The Vetro V5 got 58.5 decibels, where the Corsair got 55.6, the Wraith Prism got 60.4, and the Wraith Stealth got 54.1. But the Vetro was very quiet, even under load, it didn't sound too bad to me, and once you put it in a case, it'll be even better. So let's talk about my final thoughts of this cooler. I love it, I think it's great. Uh, I wouldn't have made the video, honestly, if I didn't like it, because I tend to do a lot of research before I buy products. It's $30 USD. It has all the components you need to attach it for AMD and Intel. And like I said, even LGA 1700 works with this cooler. I've tried it. And as you can see from the benchmarks, it cooled the Ryzen 7 5700G just fine. It had no issues keeping it cool, even under 100% load. And if you're just gonna be gaming or something, this will handle it with no issues. It's really quiet when it's not at 100% fan speed from stress testing, obviously. And it looks great. I think it looks way better than either of the AMD options out there. And I would definitely recommend this. If you have a Wraith Stealth or something like that that comes with some of the AMD processors, go with this as a nice little upgrade. And if you have any Intel like OEM CPU coolers, get rid of them and get this. This is way better than any options that Intel gives you right from the get-go. But I think I might wanna use this in one of my next upcoming builds. So make sure you swing by to check out that video. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.